and I'm hitting, uh, it says it's setting it up, but half the time when it says it's doing this, I think we're actually live. So we may be live. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so we're just waiting for it to go to Facebook and then we'll kick this off. All right. Well, here we are again. We are back uh, with our autoimmune series. So I'm pulling that reminder off for me to actually record this and it didn't apparently work. So record, okay. There we go. We are good. Hello, my name is Tracy Gowler. I am the owner of Your Health Made Simple. I provide women over 40 with a structured healing program that improves the way they are living with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune disease. And we're back with another installment of the autoimmune webinar series. And if you haven't been following the series, they're recorded and you can find those on our YouTube channel or you can find us here live on, on Facebook as well. You can So you can find them on the page if you go looking. And this week, I'm so excited to have my friend and coach Kevin Gifford here to share more information on other modalities and recommendations to support your healing journey. So Kevin has spent the past 17 years creating a coaching practice that focuses on assisting individuals and organizations in the creation of new growth opportunities, both professionally and personally. He also presides over a successful business networking group that has created beneficial long-term business relationships in the Colorado Springs area. Kevin is the creator of the GIST Planner and has created workbooks to help individuals stay in action, stay accountable, and gain clarity to their purpose. He has just finished his book, 101 Doses of Inspiration, that will be available to the of 101 Doses of Attitude and Inspiration, excuse me, that will be available to the public soon. He created and facilitates the Business Propulsion Group coaching program for entrepreneurs and release the breaks, which is a two day workshop for those who seek more from their lives. Prior to pursuing his passion for coaching, Kevin spent 25 years in corporate management and supervision, specializing in employee development and training. He has served on different education advisory boards, focusing on engineering and management curriculums through his vast experience. Kevin has gained an understanding of people and what it takes to inspire action. He has assisted many entrepreneurs and small business owners develop a mindset for success, create personal visions that are inspiring, and form action plans that generate results. And I am so glad he's here. So welcome, Kevin, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, Tracy. I uh, certainly appreciate uh, being on here live with you. Uh, I've been so impressed with you, what you have accomplished uh, over the last few years and uh, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to, uh, to be able to share tonight with, uh, with your guest. Thank you. I really appreciate that as well. So are you ready to get down to it? Because I love talking about mindset. Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. So before we dive in, would you mind telling us a little bit about why you started your business? Sure. Um, I'm about defining moments and uh, I, I had a couple of them. Uh, that were really remarkable for me. One was it happened on uh, January 24th of 1995 in Las Vegas. Uh, it was actually my first time of being there. Uh, I was actually assisting, uh, just going uh, with a friend. He was uh, working at a convention and I thought I'd go see this thing called uh, Cirque du Soleil. Uh, but I had an epiphany in front of the, what is now New York, New York. It was just a construction site at the time at 1.30 in the morning. I realized I want to be Kevin. I don't want to be the person that other people think I should be. Um, fast forward to uh, 2001, uh, and I will say that events in 1995 really did uh, change some things for me. Uh, it really did put me in a different mindset. Uh, but in 2001, uh, my best friend called me up and said, hey, there's this thing called executive coaching. And I think you'd be perfect for it. And uh, we grew up together and he had, uh, uh, he knew that I was supposed to be a coach. I knew he was supposed to be in ministry. I said, once you go into ministry, I'll, I'll go into this coaching thing, whatever it might be. Uh, two weeks later, I get a call from a person who used to run an employee assistance program. And she said, I'd like to come talk to your executives about executive coaching. 
I was like, wow, I just heard about this from a friend of mine. So come on in. I want to hear about this stuff. Uh, she explained it to me. And uh, immediately I called our EAP and said, do we have anybody who's a coach? And our, my uh, EAP person said, yes, we actually have a therapist who just added coaching uh, to their uh, services. So well, I want to meet this person. So I set up a meeting with them. It was in that meeting that I realized that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It is like the skies opened up. This big hand of God came down and smacked me right upside the head and said, Kevin, be a coach. Right. Uh, I immediately hired him as my coach, said, I'm going to be a coach. And I spent four years, the next four years, learning everything I could about coaching uh, from life coaching, business coaching, executive, corporate relationship coaching. Yeah. Uh, for the first two years of this journey, I didn't tell anybody in my life. No one knew what I was doing. I just wasn't comfortable with it. Uh, but once I made that announcement, the ball started rolling. I was able to uh, really focus and moving forward, uh, taking care of things uh, as far as paying off everything that I owed, uh, getting everything set up so that when I left the corporate world, I could just start my coaching practice. Yeah. That happened at uh, the end of the 2004, uh, December of 2004, they actually asked me to stay over a couple more weeks. So officially January 14th of 2005, I started my coaching practice. Wonderful. Uh, and I have not worked a day since. I <laughs> love what I do. Right. Uh, I work with brilliant clients. I, uh, I, I love it. And so I have spent the last uh, 17 years, 18 years, 20 years, really building a coaching practice, uh, to help people move forward, whether it be in their business or in their life. Okay. And mindset is a foundational component of all of this. It really is, isn't it? Yes, it and is. I, for one, am so glad you started your coaching business. I started working with Kevin as my coach and it was either 2007 or 2008, I think. I mm -hmm. can't, don't really know, but I found Kevin when my illness started getting really bad for me. I was also in the middle of a significant midlife crisis with kids leaving the nest, having to look after my dad who was very sick and not knowing who I was anymore, not knowing what I wanted for my life. And I felt at that time I was a bit of a mess. And he helped pick me up and figure out who I was and what I wanted for my life. And that was quite a while ago. And I can never say thank you enough. So again, thank you so much for being here. I've had people say to me, I'm going to be there because I need a little bit of Kevin. Um, <laughs> and I've had people say to me, can I please share this? So I'm sure we've got a few people uh, out there watching us today, but it's hard to pay attention to what we're doing here and also Facebook. So my focus is right here right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So let's dive in to what we're here to talk about. I tell my clients all the time that they need to mind their mind because healing from autoimmune can be a long, hard journey. So why is mindset so important to success in not only healing from autoimmune, but just in general? Well, uh, our brains really don't have the ability to distinguish between what is real and, and, and what is fantasy. It just knows what we focus on. And so it's so important to focus on what you want. It's so important that uh, you program yourself uh, for a positive mindset. <clears throat> we face, well, here's an example. For the first two years of our lives, all the people in our life, the, the adults, uh, whether it be mom and dad, grandparents, older siblings, uncles, aunts, all they want for us is to learn how to walk and talk. And then for the next 16 to 18 years, everybody's telling us to sit down and shut up. Right. right? right. So we have this uh, negative, and, and, and they're not doing it on purpose, but uh, we're getting this negative input. And so it's important for us to uh, really tell ourselves that we're worthy of what we desire, that we are good people, that we are capable of success. Yeah. Uh, 
it's a matter of constantly programming your brain. Uh, doing that, uh, it triggers some things in your mind. It triggers some things in your body. And as you know, I personally went through this uh, in 2016, late 2016, uh, the bottom fell out of my life. My health, uh, I was hit with a thing that is now neuromitochondrial myelitis is what it was diagnosed, I was diagnosed with. Yeah. Uh, I was told in, by mid-2017 uh, that I probably lo would lose my ability to walk. Uh, I had total facial paralysis at one time. I'd lost uh, almost 50 pounds in a matter of a few months. Yeah. Uh, I had problems with my eyesight where I really thought I'm not going to ever be able to see again. Uh, but I told myself, no, no. Uh, so the affirmations really kicked in again for me in my life, where I was telling myself, no, you're capable of healing your body. You are capable of accomplishing what you desire. You're not done yet. Uh, and uh, as of uh, January this year, my neurologist, we did a, a MRI and for whatever reason, the lesions have gone down tremendously and uh, I still have some issues, some uh, neuropathy, but for the most part, I'm back. So You're back. I'm back. Yeah. And I'm ready and raring to go all the time. Right. Um, and I do believe that affirmation was a key part of that, but also my reticular activation system and what I focus on, focusing on what I want and what is most important to me. So I'm very much, as you know, Tracy, about values and yes. living to your values. Yes. Uh, one of the things that's in my planning system is an exercise on values, is determining what your four core values are and then writing those down every week. And the reason why I encourage to write them down every week is, is that it forces you to focus on what's most important to you. I like my week to reflect my four core values. And as you know, Tracy, I color code my planner. If those colors that I like are showing up in my planner, I know. All over the planner. Up. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So uh, the mindset is so incredibly important. Uh, your focus is so important. And yeah. the, the thing is, is that it's not difficult. Yeah. It's simple. It's, it's something that you just have to discipline yourself and to focus on. Yes. It, it's, that's all you have to do. It right. doesn't require procedures and in, intense therapies. It's a matter of just telling yourself, you know what? I can do this. I am capable. And, be, and be, begin to believe in yourself. Right. what you are capable of accomplishing right. because you can Tracy, you did it. I mean, my I did. goodness. I did uh, it. Well, folks listening in, I, she probably doesn't share what she's accomplished. I mean, it's remarkable what Tracy has done. Thank you. Yes. It really is about reminding yourself, not just weekly, but daily, right? That absolutely number one, you're worth it. Number one, you can have whatever you want you know, it might take some time and some effort. However, um, you know, the alternative is what? Exactly. Yes. And from an autoimmune perspective, it means if you aren't managing this, you're going to end up with another one and another one. And your life literally slips away from you. You lose 15 to 20 years of your life. Um, and, you know, if that isn't what you want for your life, then it's time to dive into this mindset and this focus and make it happen because it's possible, right? We have two people sitting right here that have done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to your mindset and this belief in yourself, I believe it's so important that you think of yourself as a, uh, a laser light a laser pointer and Tracy, you know, you've seen this example and uh, I could show it on the screen, but uh, I don't need to. But if you think about light, uh, a desk lamp, it's diffused light, even a flashlight. It can go out uh, 
Well, the newer ones can go as far as 1,500, 1,600 feet, which is remarkable. These high-powered LED bulbs. But with a simple laser pointer, uh, a green laser pointer, the green light, uh, can go up to 300 miles. That is unbelievable. Right. Focused energy, and it takes less energy for that light. Yes. Flashlight will require several batteries. Um, a laser pointer, a simple little LCD battery, uh, a lithium battery that requires hardly any energy whatsoever. Right. So if you focus, you can actually go much further. Uh, so the thing is, is to understand that it will take time. Uh, yeah. It doesn't happen quickly. But if you stay focused, I do believe that, especially if you are stick to it for a minimum of three to six months where you are truly affirming yourself each and every day, uh, making a commitment to your values uh, that you will start to see results. Absolutely. Uh, and and Absolutely. then, yeah, uh, if you just keep that going for 12 to 18 months, it's remarkable what can change for your life. Yeah. It is remarkable what can change for your life, but I find that motivation for my clients because of the length of time that the healing process can take is also hard. Like my, my big program is a six month program and every client I say, you know, the initial 90 days, like you need to commit to this way of eating for at least 90 days, maybe up to six months. And on top of that, it isn't just a now kind of a thing. It's a lifestyle that you're committing to. And many of my clients, including myself, have actually fallen off that wagon a few times to some degree. So what do you think are some of the pitfalls for losing motivation and mindset? Well, it's interesting uh, you bring that up because we are so, so easily distracted. Uh, things come out of left field for us. Uh, the coronavirus is probably the biggest one that in our in our lifetime yeah talk about a distraction and kind of you know taking everybody off the rails uh, so there are disruptors that that show up and we're programmed psycho cybernetics so it's so easy to go back to what was comfortable it's like a spring so if you take a spring and you compress it well it wants to go back to its natural state yes so over time, through programming and through diet, exercise, lifestyle changes, because it's not just about the mindset. These are actions that you're taking. And the more that you're taking the actions, the more muscle memory there is. What you start to do is you start to change the spring okay. so that this becomes the natural way of the spring being. It doesn't, it's uncomfortable going back out here. It doesn't like it. It wants to stay here. Right. So over time, this lifestyle change. And what you find is that spring is tight. Uh, it, it's functioning really well if you can keep it there. Yeah. And so uh, it's understanding that this is a process. Yeah. Our entire lives is a, are, are processes. Right. So it's making that commitment. And it doesn't have to change truly change everything about who you are. Right. You can still keep yourself of who you are, but let's get rid of some of these badges that we wear that, well, I have this going on in my life. And so this is who I am. Right. Uh, yeah. How about we change that badge? <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a lot of drama out there and I think people get very distracted by the drama that's going on, right? Whether it's family drama or even this, right? And what ends up happening is we lose that focus as we start to pay attention to other places. And I think part of the mindset is the realization that that's all noise. It really is. Right? It's funny you bring that up because, uh, and I was going to, and I'll just show it here. I think I've got it on here, but I, I created something. This is my... In my, this is my GIST system, and so this is my planner. And, uh, but I have my, uh, my goals. My vision board is right here. 
Yeah. But this little thing right here, uh, I created this back in 1995 after I got back from Vegas. And it's a guy that's uh, watching all this construction and chaos going on. And a little note to myself, it's okay to observe the chaos. Just don't let yourself get trapped by it. Right. And it has been over my desk ever since. I keep it with me all the time. All the time. Yes. That I don't want to get trapped by chaos. Yeah. Like you said, Tracy, whether it be uh, political drama, you know, stuff with the, the markets, the economy, your finances, family drama, right. um, whatever is going on or whatever, you know, Game of Thrones or whatever show you're watching, that <laughs> drama, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's what you can control, right. you and yourself. This other stuff is, again, like you're saying, it's noise. It's just yeah. distractions. It and, is distractions. Yeah, and, and you're giving it permission to distract right. you, whatever it is. You don't right. have to give it permission. No, no, because the reality is, in order to heal, you have to become the priority, which means the focus turns in on you, what you need. And I realize we've got families and children that need us, mm -hmm. But it's like you talk about all the time when you're scheduling your week, your day, your month, whatever it is, you schedule yourself first. Yep. Everyone else fits in around you, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my time is always scheduled first because I'm a firm believer that if you don't take care of yourself, you can't effectively take care of anybody else. And so right. I want to be a provider. My number one value is being a good father, spouse, coach, and friend. And if I'm not taking care of myself, I cannot be that person that I so truly want to be. Yeah. So my time is scheduled first uh, every day of the week. Uh, so as Tracy knows, at the beginning of the week, uh, I schedule my time first, I color code it, and it's the color purple, and I schedule morning time for prayer meditation, but every day I schedule naps. Uh, and I don't deviate from my nap time. Uh, I mean, I put the mat on the floor and put on the music and I get, you know, a little milk and uh, you know, animal crackers or whatever you, you got when you're in kindergarten and I, boom, I'm down, right? Uh, right. Yeah, because it's important to me. I, I, I need that, I want it. Uh, but what it does is it, it helps me effectively be able to do other things. And so right. making yourself the priority for your target market, uh, the women who are over 40, they've spent a lifetime taking care of everybody else. Yes. Why not? It's okay to be a little selfish and take care of you. You deserve it. You've taken care of other people. You put everybody else first. Yeah. Why not use this time in your life to just take care of yourself and don't apologize for it. It's okay. Not at all. Yeah. And that leads us into the next question that I have for you, which is what tools and tricks do you recommend to help people avoid those pitfalls? You know? Okay. So, uh, yeah. So I do have the planning system, the gist. And right. uh, if I was to, I could, I could pull it up on the computer, but that would be too high tech. So let's just be simple with this. <laughs> okay. This is what it looks like. Okay. This is what the pages look like. Your weekly schedule is here. Right. Uh, but for me, the power of the gist is on this page. Your values. You write your values down every day or I mean every week. Your habits. So you write down the habits that you want to be working on, but there's check uh, boxes for check marks. <laughs> so uh, you can hold yourself accountable. Yeah, I did that. I did that. Right. Here's a place for celebrations and gratitude. I highly encourage it each and every day and a way of keeping you focused and keep you moving forward is to celebrate the things that you've accomplished, the things that you're grateful for in your life. Yeah. It's a different type of mindset. What are those good things? I just did this with my uh, uh, business group that I have. Uh, and last week I had uh, 22 people on a Zoom meeting and I brought this up about gratitude and I said, what are you grateful for? And uh, it was one of the most amazing meetings I've ever been in because nobody talked about their business, what they were grateful for in their business. It was their life. Right. Uh, 
it got emotional. It was really amazing. It was such a cleansing experience for so many people. Uh, I was really touched by uh, what happened there. So this is an important section. Yeah. Up here is your attitude. What attitude do you choose each and every day? Today, I choose to be this. Yeah. This is my attitude. I'm going to hold myself accountable to it. Right. Here are the agreements I make, or my priorities, by the way, or rather. Here are my priorities for the week. These are the things I want to focus on. Yeah. All this other stuff, no. This is what I want to focus on. Right. And then, what are the agreements that I made? Who do I make the agreements with? Right. Here's a little place for reminders and notes, whatever. So I have this. Um, I have an accountability log, which Tracy used uh, brilliantly. Uh, nobody else has used this book better than Tracy Geller did. Uh, I, and oh my gosh, uh, she was blowing me away with what she was accomplishing. But uh, each and every week, there's a place of what you want to accomplish. And then you, and then you, you grade yourself at the end of the week, right? What did I do? What did I learn? Right. Uh, it's a way of holding yourself accountable. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's that again with the affirmation. I highly encourage affirmation and, and not just, uh, okay, I've written the affirmation down, but at least six times a day, affirmation, you recital. And affirmations, I am statements, uh, positive statements. I, I encourage anytime you see your reflection to uh, do that. Uh, one of my early ones was every time I saw my reflection, I was just, you're so good looking, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so the affirmation is important. The other thing is to tap into things that give you energy. So I have a little exercise where you list the energy givers in different aspects of your life but also those things that drain your energy. Right. You want to identify both, right? Yeah. So what can we do to either eliminate or at least limit or isolate those drainers? Yep. What are those energy givers that we can tap into? During this coronavirus, I had tapped into so many movies that inspired me over the years, books, um, music, uh, yeah. Things that just inspire me. So I go to scenes of movies that inspire me. Scenes right. of TV shows that inspired me in the past. Yeah. Um, sporting events. Uh, just re, uh, those types of things. Activities that give me energy. Uh, things that inspire me. Tap into those things that give you energy. People that give you energy. If there are people that drain you, try to limit your interactions with them. Right. Or better yet, just eliminate them. Right. And, and not eliminate them, but I mean, maybe don't have them in your life. So uh, I'm not promoting any kind of violence or anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or at least if you're going to do it, just don't tell anybody. Exactly. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I, I won't go into that. I, I'm, <laughs> I know things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Um, I have another question for you. Do you believe in using goals and action items as a way to keep up the motivation? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yes, I do. Yeah. And that is really where the uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, goals all the time. That's where the priorities, the, all my priorities are really tapped are, are to my goals. So I break it down and I don't have too many goals. Yeah. So I have my business goals. I have my uh, leisure time. This is my time with my wife, Bridget. So the fun things that we do, um, here's finances. Um, this is my personal health and this is my family. Yeah. And then this is just the reminder, here's the year. But what are those things I want to accomplish in these, these few areas of my life? That's what I can focus on I don't want to have a lot of things. So I'm going to be very focused on these things. But what are the actions that I can be taking? And it's not just the actions because a goal is something you want to accomplish. The action is what you have to do in order to make that happen. Yeah. So I'm very big on not just what are the actions, but who can help you when right. you want to start the action. But also what are the sub actions that are going to get you into action? So for me, I have different playlists for different activities. 
because uh, I like I like to listen to music. But if I'm creating certain things, there's certain music that I like to listen to. Uh, I like like my my office area. Uh, it inspires me in certain ways. I have a Zen garden that I look at that's uh, in a window well. Uh, that gives me energy. Uh, it's something that helps me stay focused. Right. So it's a sub action that's going to ensure I get into action. Right. Uh, right. And so ladies, if you're part of my program and you're watching this, this is the reason why I ask you to define what you want from your health as a goal. Um, this is why I talk about defining action items and sub action items that you're going to have to take on. And a lot of that is defined by the program that you're in. It's also defined by you looking at your life um, and how you might have to rearrange a few things to help you make yourself a priority because all of these things become actions. So if your goal is health and that's one of your goals, all the actions that you're taking every week should ultimately support that goal. And that will help you get closer and closer to that goal. And where did I learn all this from? Oh my gosh, this man is sitting right here <laughs> in front of you right now. Um, so, but you know, it really, if, if you're type A and you're like me and you're wanting to know how you can be successful at doing this and just about every one of my clients is type A, this is where you put your, that energy that you have. And I know you're tired and you're exhausted, but I also know you want to be healthy. So you take that energy that you have and let, take the time to recreate what your life is going to look like with those action items and that goal to make sure that you're moving forward towards it every day, even if it's a slow process, you're still taking steps. Absolutely. And there's something else. And it's, it's so funny because it, it popped up into my head and it was a, a real turning point for you, Tracy yeah. was going from being aware of certain words that are resistance words need should must got to have to the resistance words yeah we don't like people telling us what to do uh, none of us do i don't even we, like it when i tell myself what to exactly. do exactly we don't even like it when we tell ourselves so there's a part of us that says i'm gonna go do this and then there's another part of you that says don't tell me what to do and we clash we right. clash with ourselves so it's being aware of well, I need to do this. I've got to do that. I must do this. I should be doing this. We spend a lot of time shooting all over ourselves. And what I encourage you to do is to change that verbiage to, I want to, and I will do this. Right. It is amazing what it does. Yes. Uh, and, and my coach back in 2001 said, I have never heard a person say, need to and want to or need, need to and got to and should more than you kevin and so what i did was is i asked my three best friends to hold me accountable that anytime they heard those words come out of my mouth in a conversation to interrupt me yeah and ladies i could get through a conversation because these three delighted in just shutting me up every time i said it i started changing my verbiage I went from, well, I need to do this. I got to do that. I should be doing this to, well, I want to be doing this to, well, I'm just going to go do it. I will do this. Right. Just saying it changes the way it feels. Doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So yes. ultimately the, the way to say it is I want to be healthy, right? right. And I will be healthy. Yeah, I will be healthy. I, you know, that too. It's not just, I want to, it's, I will. So when you're saying the affirmations, it's as if you're already there. Absolutely. Right. And for you, Tracy, when you, when that verbiage started changing, yeah. boy, did you just take off? It was yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It was huge. Yes. Um. So I just want to say, because I want to talk about your GIST system a little bit, that I want to say how much I love your GIST system. And everyone, he's going to take the high road and tell you that 
It stands for get your stuff together. You're probably wondering why it's called the GIST system. It is not that, no. Um, it is really all about getting your shit together. So just so you know that, if any of you are in my program, you do get one of these systems. It will say get your shit together on it. Uh, so that's what you're going to do. Um, I haven't been as good lately about using mine, but I have to tell you that through my entire healing process, I used his system to keep me moving forward. I scheduled my life and I committed to it. And I know, Kevin, you have walked us through that a little bit, but you do have a couple of other pieces that support that system that I am not providing. Do you want to walk through some of those other products that you have that do help people to get in that right mindset? Well, as far as the planner itself or the books? No, the other pieces that come that that people have an opportunity to dive into as well. Like the other one was the action log, which I like oh, yeah. I I bled all over that sucker every week because for me, it kept me accountable every day. Uh-huh. But I know you have a couple more things. Gosh, if I only had one available. Okay, so here's the action log. Uh, right. Yeah, and the action log is really for those times in uh, when, okay, I'm really going to get focused here. I am really, uh, yeah. I want to get down to brass tacks and get some things done. So right. what your schedule is. Uh, professionally what your highest priorities are, personally what your highest priorities are, things that you might be able to delegate to other people. And then if you have extra time, what can you get done? Yeah. Uh, on this side, um, the people that you're going to contact, yep. these people, this is most important, these people, uh, then important stuff that may have come up that, okay, because uh, you want to be aware of these things because it's always going to come up. Right. But it's a way of, okay, identifying because maybe we can uh, uh, work around this going forward. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, some notes, but again, what's your attitude for the day? Uh, and what are you grateful for? Again, what are you grateful for? What did you accomplish? We spent a lot of time going, well, I didn't get this done, I didn't get that done. What did you get done? Because especially A-type personalities, you got a lot done. Uh, <laughs> Right. Uh, I know that for a fact. So why not celebrate what you did and right. not what you didn't do? There's always stuff to do. And then what did you do well? And then right. you rate yourself, right? So that's the action log. Uh, Sadly, I'm also a perfectionist. So I don't think I ever gave myself more than an eight, but <laughs> it was good. I got a lot of stuff done. Uh, most ultra successful people, if you were to ask them of all your goals, uh, how many did you accomplish percentage wise? Mm. Uh, they'll tell you about 70%. Right. And I can almost guarantee you, if you ask them, how many of them did you get done in the time that you said? Zero. Right. <laughs> right. No, it, it takes time, right? right. It, it's a, it's a process. So it's okay. Yeah. We, we strive for perfection, but there's nothing perfect. No. So be okay with that, but you still strive for the perfection. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't beat myself up so bad anymore if I don't get there because I do do the vision boards every year. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a vision board every year now for maybe six or seven years. Um, or even longer than that, I think. Maybe even yeah. longer. Yeah. But, you know, when I look at it, even though it's out there, I'm not necessarily paying a lot of attention every day, but I put it out there what I want. I get between 70 to 80% done every year, but it's not that I don't get the rest of it done. It just follows a little bit later. Cause I think even my car was on my vision board for three years before <laughs> I actually <laughs> did get my car, I, <laughs> but I, I did get my car. Yes. I heard the car before I saw it and <laughs> I knew when I heard it, oh my right. gosh, she got the car. I got the car. And it was the car that was on the vision board. Right. The the house that you wanted. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Uh, ladies, what an impressive house. Tracy, the house that Tracy built. <laughs> she told me about that in 2007 and yeah. it took time, but she did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That vision. Yeah. Um, for myself, so much of this, uh, 
I'm very big on it. And as you know, Tracy, and something that uh, as far as a tool and technique, uh, let me pull it out here. I probably should just grab my planner cover would have been easier. But uh, as far as making yourself a priority and always being focused. Yeah. I have this little card I keep in my wallet. And actually this is, um, it folds out. Uh, it's in my garage. It's at my desk. It's in my planning system. It's in my nightstand. And I sit on it all day long. Um, <laughs> Cause I guess that's where I absorb the most, but I have my purpose statement. Who am I? What do I want to be? And this is, this is my purpose in life. I have my vision for myself. Uh, I have my mission. How am I going to accomplish my purpose and my mission? This is how I accomplish it. And then I have my goals, personal and professional. Uh, I take some time to do that. And then I have my affirmation, uh, which all my affirmations have uh, come down to one phrase uh, is because I'm Kevin Gifford. And that is a lot of different things, but it is because I'm Kevin Gifford. That's uh, why things are happening because it's who I am. But this has come over 25, 30 years of affirmation uh, that I've been able to squeeze it down. But uh, that's one of those tools and techniques I use as well. And it's all tied to the gist system as well. Now, uh, all of this is tied to how to keep yourself focused on you what's most important. Right. I also have a workbook, Discovering the True You. Um, I believe I have. I got, yeah, I got the workbook here. There's that workbook. Uh, right. Yeah. If you, and that's if, an incredible workbook. I have not walked through that workbook, but I have given that workbook to people. Um, uh, and the only reason I haven't worked through it is I think because it came after our initial work together, but it's a Absolutely. great way to yeah. start. Yeah defining what you want from your life and who you are and why you want things. So it's also a great opportunity to a good place to start. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then the, the book, 101 doses of attitude and inspiration, um, Which is and great. Is a compilation of attitude thoughts that I wrote over the years. You know, yeah. I, I wrote these things from 2003 up to 2015. I've just started writing more again. Uh, yeah. But what's here's one of the great things about uh, what I do is seeing people take an idea and run with it. So uh, I was just talking with somebody who took the my planner. Uh, they made their own. It's about this thick. It's <laughs> remarkable. But every day is a holiday. She made every day a holiday. Uh, every day she writes the script for her day. This is how the day is going to go. I write a script and she writes a story at the beginning of the day. Uh, the adventure she's going to be going on, how this is going to be. Uh, wow, that's amazing. Uh, but it's amazing what's happened for this person. Right. Uh, yeah. Tracy, with the stuff that you've done where you've taken it and just to a whole different level uh, for yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's amazing what mindset can do when you focus and, yes. you know, and it's hard to do without tools. I will say that, like, it's hard to stay in that place without the tools. And so that's part of the reason besides all the things that Kevin talks about why it's so important for him to be here because he is the tool master and we've, he's got all these tools to help you get to that place that you want to go. And so, um, well, you know, we've talked a lot about here about mindset, and I think even still people might have questions. Um, but before we get to telling them how they can reach out to you if they want to, is there any last piece of advice or something that we haven't talked about that you'd like to share with everybody watching? Just sure. You know? um, first and foremost, you can get all the tools and you can go and practice all the techniques. Right. But it's so important to have somebody that can hold you accountable yeah. and help you in that path yeah. with a coach. Yeah. Tracy's a great coach. Uh, I love coaching coaches and the good ones. Uh, well, <laughs> there's 
there, there, there's great ones. Tracy's a great one. Thank you. Um, and I, I love coaches, but somebody that has maybe been there, done that, knows what you're going through, yeah. uh, is there to be your champion, is non judgmental. A coach is non judgmental. They're going to be there for you. And their goal, as any coach, if you think of an athletic coach, their goal is to help their athletes or their teams win to improve. So find a coach. It's worth every penny that you are paying uh, to them because it's it's you. It is it's your life. It's your future. So find a coach. I highly recommend Tracy because she's amazing what she does, and. Uh, she's one of my fifth gear people, and uh, that's something that uh, that's a secret. But uh, uh, in my uh, 17 years of coaching, uh, there's only been six of them. So uh, Tracy is the first of the six. So uh, she's the benchmark for everybody else. And, you it know, hasn't coach, always served me well, Kevin, but you know what? I can't, it just is, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, so. the coach is, a, I, I believe a, uh, is really one of the key components of all of this. Yeah. Somebody that just says, you know what? Sure. You had a bad week, but what were those obstacles? What were those setbacks? What can we do to overcome that? And let's do it together. I'll support you on that. Right. Uh, give you the space to talk through this and, Let's get you on back on the path because we all have detours, right? Uh, I'm sure none of us has ever hit every green light every, every time you go to work or every time that you've gone to the grocery store, the department store, whatever, right. that you've never had a, a moment where you haven't hit the red light yeah. or you had to deal with construction, right? There's always those setbacks, those obstacles. Right. Uh, but you get through it. Right. You so keep moving forward. Absolutely. The coach is uh, an important component. I still have a coach and yeah. I'll never give up coaching, uh, having a coach. It's important that we have that in our lives. Yeah, it is. Thank you. I mm -hmm. appreciate that. And this has been awesome. Um, so yeah. I know that if you don't mind, because I know there's going to be people very, very interested in contacting you for not just your just system, but even maybe coaching from a personal perspective, because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here coaching on the physical side of the healing process, but there's a lot sometimes to wrap your head around and get you moving in the right direction. So maybe let them know how they can get in touch with you for more information. I just, I also just want to say that your release the break seminar is amazing. Um, and it was really where we started, wasn't it? I think yeah, that's how, was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just as an FYI, everybody, but how can people get in touch with you? Um, well, uh, my website is, uh, Kevin Gifford.com. Uh, you can contact me email, Kevin at KevinGifford.com. Because there's a trend there with this. Uh, one of my coaches said, just do that. They'll never forget you, right? Uh, right. And uh, my phone number is uh, area code 719-964-5709. Uh, and leave a message. I will uh, get a hold of you. Uh, for people that are working with Tracy, let me know you're working with Tracy, and I'll, I'll give you a discount on coaching. Uh, if it's not me, I can point you in a direction of a coach. If you, uh, I meet with people internationally, uh, locally. I can meet by phone, uh, this way uh, through uh, Zoom meetings and uh, yeah, in person. And uh, I have a passion for coaching, as Tracy does. It's not what I do; it's who I am. And so, if you are interested in it, I would love to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, and, and help you get pointed in the right direction. Yeah. So, yeah. There's, there's my commercial. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and anybody that's on here is absolutely welcome to give out their commercial because we really do appreciate you being here, sharing all this information for free. You know, it's, it's, and it's great information, but there you go. So, um, yeah, this has been great, Kevin. Thank you for being here. There's so much great information cool. every time we chat and Ladies, every year I do a vision board thing if you're local. Um, 
and we have the gathering at my house. We put it through, to, we, we spend a day or well, not I've had, it's not really a day. It's, it's like three or four hours, like sort of putting together the vision boards, but Kevin starts us off every year and the motivation that he provides to us every year when we do this is amazing. So this, this is something that you're also interested in. Let me know. We do it usually every November ish time frame. I think. Yeah. November, early December. Early December. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. There, uh, I thought it was a brilliant idea. Uh, the early years, there was a lot of, <laughs> but, uh, that's, uh, that's different off. no that never happened I, um, but it could but your uh your idea your vision for that was remarkable to me and the people that attended that yeah uh, because i know these people and what they were able to accomplish because they put this stuff on this vision board right got really specific yeah uh, I think a couple of them like, oh my gosh. Uh, yes. One photographer we know. You got to be kidding. One photographer we know, right? and I think she's watching. And I uh, <laughs> he just needed a little reminder uh, that she's a powerhouse and she, she can absolutely do whatever she is. wants to. She, that woman has captured the power of the universe for herself better yeah. than anybody I've ever seen do that. Superstar. So, She's yep. a superstar. Yep. So, girl, if you're watching, you just needed that reminder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I tell you what, uh, yeah, people in her profession speak incredibly highly of her. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I just mentioned her name and it's, yeah, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? She uh, doesn't even yeah. realize how no, she great she know. is. So, you know, yeah. and this is a woman that has gone through this as well with Kevin. Um, she is another fifth gear. And, yep. um, and so what I'm saying to you guys is it just doesn't have to be around health. It can be in all aspects of your life, but it is a great start if you're trying to take your health back and really create that life for you to live. Uh, well, it's your life. Just take charge of it and walk through the process of creating that focus, making yourself a priority. And Kevin's got the tools. Um, but Kevin also has a wonderful approach if you think you just need a little bit more help. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And Tracy, I have to say, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to talk about what I love, yes. but uh, it was fun just doing that. But to be able to see you in this position and doing this stuff thank delights you. me to no end. Thank I may you. not be able to go to sleep tonight. Uh, <laughs> my poor wife, I'll be talking to oh my gosh and another thing oh this is fantastic and she's gonna be going look i just want to read but would you knock it off so uh it might go on for the rest of the week so i just want to let you know i'm excited for you i'm so happy thank you yeah. oh i appreciate that so much so that is the end of our show everyone and i just want to tell you the next one won't be for two weeks we 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 ran into an every week thing because we had a lot of people that we were trying to get in here and timing worked out that way. But my next guest is Beth Malcook. She is another one of my clients. Um, she's got an interesting story and she made some very interesting choices for her health, but I will let her talk about that when I have her on here. Um, and she would love to share her Hashimoto's journey with everyone. So that will be, I believe on the 10th of June, I have to confirm the time with her. Unfortunately, but also fortunately, and yes, uh, 10 years ago, I'm, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do this anymore, but softball season is starting oh, and no, it's on it's... Wednesday nights <laughs> and Wednesday nights. And when I put this together, I didn't even think I would be back playing, but they've decided that we're playing despite everything that's going on. And I have to tell you like every year that I get being 56 now is just a gift and I'm sorry. I have to shift our timing so I can play this season. Um, so we're going to be making some changes. We'll have a new time. So that may move around a little bit. But J June 10th is when we're going to have our next session. And a couple more people that I've got coming in. Travis, you know Travis Rumsey, who does the oh, trauma attention fantastic. release exercises, Jeez. right? Isn't amazing. he amazing? Absolutely. Yes. And so he's going to be joining us, uh, hopefully in June as well. And at some point I'm going to get to my own story and what has kept me moving because I have been quite an onion to peel and 
But I think it's important to know that where I started, where I am, because you all can do this and you can all, I know where you're starting. My heart breaks for all of you, but you all have the opportunity to, to be in this space that I'm also living in right now. So, you know, who thought I was going to still be playing softball at 56, but here I am. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tracy, yeah, I highly encourage you to share your story. It's inspirational uh, what yeah. you've overcome. And yeah. the fact that you're still playing softball, I can't believe that you're doing that. Good for you. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you again. Um, and we're calling good for tonight. This has been a wonderful session. This has been, yes, I can't even say enough about this. I can't say enough about you. And have a great night, everyone. Talk to you yes. soon. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.